What's going on? It's your boy Miguel and I'm about to teach you exactly what you need to know in order to build a very good sales funnel and start getting leads in there so you can start making money as soon as today. Just in case somebody here is watching, doesn't know exactly what a sales funnel is. A sales funnel is basically a place where you obviously sell stuff, but the reason it's called a funnel is because the way if I had to show you a shape, this is going to be the sales funnel that I explained to you. But just real quick, let me just pick it out of the way. If you wanted to see why it's called a sales funnel, it's because this is the top of the funnel. This is where people are. It's your goal in order to get people in here. And once they make that first purchase or they get something from you, like something free, that would be the top of the funnel. And then it's your job to drive them further down the funnel where you can start selling them more stuff. So that is what a sales funnel is, all right? And I'm about to teach you how to make one. Like I'm literally going to take you into my computer and let you follow along with me as I make a sales funnel from scratch that you can make as well very fast. And I'm also going to show you here on the trusty whiteboard of justice um, exactly what kind of steps you would like to see inside of your funnel so that you can mimic this so regardless of whether or not you use the one that i show you inside of my computer over there you still know what a decent funnel is going to look like all right so onto the whiteboard of justice if it looks a little complicated don't you wear your little head i made it look like that on purpose to scare you just kidding so it's, it'll make sense as I like walk you through it, all right? So this hypothetical sales funnel is starts off on a sales page. So the very, the very first page that they hit, boom, it's gonna be a sales page immediately. Hey, we have this offer and we want you to check it out and buy it. Who would be hitting this, this funnel? The only people that should be seeing this step in the funnel should be warm or hot traffic. For those of you that didn't know, warm and hot traffic are, so warm traffic are people who know about you, hot traffic are people who have bought from you. Cold traffic are people who don't know you and they've never bought, well obviously if they don't know you they didn't buy from you. But the point is they don't know you and that makes them a lot less likely to purchase something from you. So warm and hot traffic, you're seeing this page and then they get to the order form. The order form is a place where they put their credit card information and their name, all right? So your job as a marketer or a business owner is to make sure that as many people that get to the sales page, click over and get to the order form. And then your job is to get them so convinced, so burning hot with desire for this amazing product that you're presenting to them that they take out their credit card and they make a purchase in order to get to the very next page in the funnel all right so you obviously never be able to get to 100 but a decent number to have right here would be anything other above two three percent so you get to like over five percent you're doing you know you're doing something very good on this order form right and the sales page so that's where everything starts. That's where majority, I mean, if you bought anything online, you understand this process of here's the sales page and then they take me to an order form so I can put my money in. But with the beauty of a sales funnel is everything that happens after that, all right? So make sure everything's in screen. Yes, it is. All right, so the very first upsell, um, basically what an upsell is, if you don't know, an upsell is, hey, you bought this thing, would you like this? Oh, you want a Big Mac? Would you like fries with that? That is an upsell, all right? So inside of a funnel, you're able to upsell someone immediately, but the thing with upsells is that you want to make sure that they relate to the original product that they bought, but isn't completely identical in the need that they were trying to solve um if that didn't make sense i'll give you an explanation if i were to i'm in the fitness space so if i were to be selling somebody an app product right here so if i'm selling them an app product on the order form and they're like yes i want amazing apps 
let me purchase that product so I can figure this out. This sounds like a good product. All right, so cool, they got that. The very next upsell should not be, so say this is an ad, P, uh, an ad PDF with a ton of tricks and stuff. This can't be an ad video program. The reason it can't be an ad video program is because they just saw that. When they bought this, they were like, cool, I'm gonna get abs, uh, got it. That problem's handled. An ad video, well, I mean, like that sounds, that ad video program sounds cool, but like I already got something for that, so I don't need that. That is why that wouldn't work. But, so that is what I mean by it can't be identical in the need that they are trying to solve. But you want it to be similar in interest, similar in pain points. So obviously if you're in the fitness space, if you just did something apps, something that has to do with diet would be a very good follow-up for that as far as upsells go. Oh, that was a mouthful. If you didn't understand that, just rewind it and go back, all right? So that is the whole, that's the methodology about doing upsells. That's the thought process behind it. That's the side of stuff. It's the kind of stuff you want to keep in mind when you're doing upsells, all right? Naturally, when it gets to the page, they're either going to choose yes or no. If they say yes, cool, boom, you can offer them another upsell, same theory in mind. But if they say no, you don't have you don't have to go this route, but it is, um, it is a good thing to do just because there are a certain percentage of people who will take your down sell. And what exactly is a down sell? It's giving them a better deal than they would have gotten on the upsell, all right? One thing I didn't mention about um, upsells is that the a way to get the, the opt-in rate for your upsells higher is to give them a deal on the upsell that they can't find anywhere else. So give them like a free trial or like knock the price down a little bit and to make sure it's the only place that they can find it is if they grab this upsell. It adds a little bit of urgency in there, right? So. Um, same thing with the down sell that you drop the price a little bit and you're like, or you drop the price, maybe you can even take off a couple of bonuses and be like, look, you still get half of the bonuses. It's at half of the price. Take an hour, you never see it again. That's like, that's basically how you want to set it up. And some people will be like, ah, I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, you drive a hard bargain, I'll take it. So then they'll, they'll end up taking your down sell. Um, regardless of whether or not they say yes or no, just to make sure I'm like not blocking this, regardless of whether or not they say yes or no, offer them that other upsell because some people might take it. And then always end on the thank you page where you show them their products and things of that nature, right? So let me just recap through this one more time. Sales page, boo boo, we have this product, it's awesome, you should buy it. They say that sounds cool. Let me let me see if I'm if, let, me, let me think about this on the order form. Let me see let me see this. They get to the order form and then they're like, ah, you know what? Let me, get, let me get my credit card. Let me buy this thing. All right. Excuse me. So they buy it. Boom, an upsell. Hey, whoop whoop. You got this one thing. You know what'll help you even more is if you get this other thing with it. You know what? I don't know, I don't know how I'm feeling about that. I, I already bought this other thing. I'm cool, I'm cool, I don't need that, all right? They hit no. Okay, but look, I know you really need this thing. I know it'll help you out. So you drop the price a little bit because um, I really think you, you should get this thing. You know what, you're right and I appreciate you for dropping the price for me. I will take it. Boom, hey, yo, we already, we got this other thing too that'll really help you and we really think you should take it. No, I'm tired of you selling me stuff. All right, cool, thank you. Go ahead and check your stuff out in the membership area. Now, I was per I was purposely getting a little frustrated at the end when I said that last upsell because um, I wanted to make a slight point of never having too many upsells because people will start to get frustrated when you're constantly badgering them with upsells and down sells and cross sells and all types of different sales. So I would honestly cap it off at two upsells at the most. One, two, yeah. I would cap. I would cap it off at like two or three upsells at the most. I've done three. If I ever do three, I always make sure that one of the upsells is very small. It's so like a small price. I mean, so um, it's very inexpensive. It's always a very inexpensive thing that it'll be the uh, third thing that's on the funnel. So yeah, cap it off at three and make sure that uh, one of them is very cheap. 
Um, if not, then just leave it at two upsells and one downsell and you'll be good, all right? So now I'm gonna take you into my computer and show you exactly what you need to do on ClickFunnels and how you need to be setting things up in order to make sure that you have an amazing uh, product launch or you're just selling a product, anything inside of a funnel where you need upsells on ClickFunnels, all right? So let's take a look inside of my computer and get this done. All right, what's going on? Welcome to the inside of my computer. I'm about to walk you through exactly what you need to do in order to build a good sales funnel, just like the one that we saw made up on that whiteboard. I'm not entirely sure if you can see it, but hopefully you did. So let's just crack into it this time. This is the first tutorial I made. I'll link that into the description if you want to see how to make a lead magnet. But right now we're talking about sales funnels, right? So this time in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the entire process from where the screen you will be seeing and from the screen you'll be seeing when you first open up ClickFunnels and you go to the funnel section, all right? So what Cookbook is, is the, just a whole bunch of templates that they've already made. They're already kind of form, formatted like some good funnels that you can use. Personally, I like to make them my own. But if you do want to use these, you're welcome to. But we're going to go with this for this for the purposes of this tutorial, just so you see how to make them entirely from scratch so that when you do look through those templates, you know which ones are good ones that you can use. And for this one, we're going to go to sell product and obviously sales funnel. Now, what do we name this? Whatever you want. But as far as the group tag, always make sure you keep your stuff grouped up so it's a lot easier for you to find your funnels later because eventually this whole thing is just going to be stacked with multiple funnels just the longer you work so it's better to stay organized from the beginning. Here's the thing that you have to know with sales funnels and why it's always good to give something away for free in the beginning. The way ClickFunnels works in particular, it's maybe different for other websites or anything else but ClickFunnels in particular the only way they're able to track the conversions on your page is if they track it through an email address that they give away it's the only way they can track conversions um, Facebook's able to track exactly what's going on um, a little more accurately it's never going to be exact but with ClickFunnels in particular anybody that hits a sales page if they don't give their email address first then it's not going to track but every now and then you do want to start off with just a sales page for like much warmer and hotter audiences so let's assume that that's exactly what you're doing you're going for a warmer hot audience that is already yours so we're going to get rid of the squeeze page because we no longer need it um, we're selling to people who um, we, we already have as a lead, basically, so there's no reason to give them a lead magnet. They have already gone through that process in, your, in their buyer's journey. So this is going to be the initial sales page. This was what we talked about on that first stage. This is the first page that they land on. And so basically what you're going to want to do is create an awesome sales page that is going to make them want to buy. I'm just looking through them. All right, so Blue Blue Beam has got to have like some of the best templates because I always usually go for just using theirs as um, as a starting block. But you can go with whatever you want. You want. You can use a blank page and then just build everything from scratch. It's entirely up to you as far as how you go about building it. Um, I plan on making a video where I show you exactly a step-by-step -step process you can do in order to make building sales pages a lot easier. And um, I'll show you that later. All right. So after they get to this sales page that you see right here. If they decide to go to the order form, they hit a button that says, yes, I want this. Click here to get started. It's going to take them to an order form. This is also something that you want to optimize as much as you possibly can because some people do fall through the cracks at this stage. I always use this order form every single time. And I pretty much leave it the same. I may like switch a picture around, do something slightly different, but for the most part, that format stays the same. I've seen good conversions with this. I always get rid of this part product name and the actual picture no, no usually i get rid of that just so you know and after they get to the order form this is where we're going to start adding our own steps this is directly after they purchase something from you 
So you want to hit upsell one or do whatever the title of the product is. What the path is is going to help a lot with when you start making custom audiences and custom conversions on Facebook. This is what you're going to use this for because it's going to be the end part of a URL and if this starts getting really complicated, you're gonna start getting hard to track on Facebook. All right, so our step is made and we're going to just move it directly into the order form because it's going to go in the exact order that you see on the screen, all right? So sales, one click upsell. Fees two are the best ones, definitely. I, I mean, that one's just kind of whatever, all right? So I'm just gonna pick this one. But what a one-click upsell is, is it's literally that. It's like, so this video will be going on like, hey, you're getting this offer this one time, um, click the button below, and then we'll add it to your order. Boom. Like, you've outsold them that. Like, they just see this page right after they purchase their thing, and because they, the system, ClickFunnels already has their card information, then yes, they can just hit this one button, and they'll have the thing that they want. That's what makes those powerful. Let's say they say no to that upsell. What happens after that? Downsell. All right, so there's not really much of a difference when it comes to what's going on here, but you do wanna make sure you go to sales and one hit one click downsell. Because if you don't, then it's not gonna put it in here properly. All right? So the way these work is literally, the only way that they get to this page is if they hit no to this one, to the one directly above it. If they hit, if they hit yes, then it's going to skip this and go to the next step in the funnel. That's basically how a downsell works. It only, it's only shown to people who say no to the upsell that went before it, all right? And same thing, format the page however you want, do nice headlines, hey, wait, um, just kidding, it's not that expensive, like whatever you want to put for a headline, don't actually put that, it's not going to work. All right, just to skip to this part real quick, I'm sure you don't need much elaboration on what's going on here, but it's just, it's literally just another upsell. So after they say they hit yes to this one, it'll go straight to this one. If they hit no, then it'll go to the down sale. And regardless of whether or not they say yes or no, they're going to go to the next upsell. That is how upsells and downsells work inside of ClickFunnels. And once you hit yes or no to any of them, it'll update their card accordingly. So if they say no, boom, it'll just skip it. If they say yes, it'll immediately charge it to their card. That's the power of it. It makes it easier for the customer, easier for the business person. And then right after that, what you wanna do is an order confirmation page where you basically give them all of their stuff, their links so that they can access their membership areas, um, any other sort of downloads you can put on this page if you really want to. I would suggest giving them other ways to access their stuff though. And that's basically it. You really don't need a thank you page because the access your order thing acts as a thank you page. So I'm not entirely sure why they even have that there, to be perfectly honest. But boom, order confirmation where you want to put for and i'll just gloss over this real quick and i'll definitely make a tutorial on how exactly you go about doing this as well but this is where you want to put your facebook pixel the targeting codes and all that this is where you change the domain you can change the name of the funnel here you can change the group that it's in right here you can put a favicon which is um, it's the little icon that goes here. So YouTube has their play button in that corner. You can put your stuff there. And then you can do like integrations down there. And the, so the purchase tracking code that you'll have in order to see whether or not people have purchased anything, obviously, is going to be put on the order confirmation page. Because regardless of what goes on inside of these pages, this one's gonna stay the same because it's like everything's already done. So you wanna put it on there because this is gonna act as your thank you page, all right? And then as far as what goes inside of the pages, that'll be a tutorial for another time, all right? But anyways, that's it for creating a sales funnel. If you wanna learn any of the things that I kind of glossed over, you want a tutorial to come out a little faster than normal, just comment below, let me know what that is. If you did learn something, you enjoyed the video, and you would like to check out more, I'd highly suggest you subscribe, hit the bell button there so you can be notified every time I open, every time I upload a new video. So thank you again for watching, and peace out.